wanted to step out of shot, really, just to show you the family that's just come across the border. They're on that's that's uh, heading into uh, eastern Poland. Must be, I think, five children, two women. I think the children are ages sort of three up to 12 years old. They've literally just walked across the border, and you can see they're getting into a car now. It could be could be a vehicle provided by the authorities. It may be a taxi. Maybe they know the driver in the orange jacket. Um, and they will be going off to a registration centre where they'll give their details. They may stay overnight, and then they're going to try and find a semi-permanent home in Poland, which at the moment we're hearing is quite difficult. Uh, so a lot of refugees that are coming across the border are heading for places like Germany and further afield where they can find uh, semi-permanent homes. And just to give you an idea of the crossing that they've come through, if we go in this direction, this is heading into Ukraine and this is where people have been coming across the border. We've been here for about three days. At this time of the day it's normally very quiet but then it builds up throughout the morning. More and more people arrive at the border. More and more vehicles from that direction arrive to take people away to these registration centres which is where we'll be broadcasting from later this morning and giving an idea of the registration process and then if I just show you over here this this is the kind of thing that sprung up in the past sort of 10 days or so um, sort of humanitarian charities some individuals there's a couple over here that have come all the way from Berlin privately that nothing to do with any sort of organization and it's just kind of sprung up here by the side of the road to try and welcome them the people that are coming through the border having made that long journey. But at the moment, uh, in terms of the numbers, 885,000 people, according to the UN, uh, have arrived in Poland from Ukraine, and we've passed the 1.5 million mark in terms of Ukraine. Well, those, those people that make um, a difference, that have driven from Berlin, we're going to be speaking to a guy later on this morning, and we have so many stories of this, people who donate and people who will then transport um, facilities and goods and uh, luxuries, you know, toothpaste, goodness knows what. How welcome is that? I mean, does it make a difference? It makes an enormous difference. It makes an enormous difference. This couple here behind me have come all the way from Berlin. Um, we, we'll be speaking to them later on. Um, they're nothing to do with any sort of organisation. And literally, as um, the Ukrainians come through the border, they, they will have all their stall laid out there and they just provide whatever they can to the kids. Toys, um, like you were saying, toothpaste, basics, uh, uh, toiletries, whatever they can do to help them on their way. So it definitely makes a difference. The problem at the moment that we're hearing is finding semi-permanent homes. So there are plenty of places to just stay for one night, to get a bed, to get a shower, somewhere to stay. But in terms of something semi-permanent, because let's be honest, this isn't going to be wrapped up months, possibly years. Now we're finding it more difficult in Poland to find homes for these people. And so they're having to go even further afield. I was speaking to one uh, Ukrainian woman yesterday who I've been staying in touch with. She was heading for Berlin yesterday afternoon. I spoke to her or messaged her late last night. She said that they're now instead going to head for somewhere near Hanover because uh, that's where there are more homes. So people are having to move, it seems, further and further afield.